The world has been severely disrupted following the global financial crisis of 2008. We are seven years after that financial crisis broke out and the global economy hit a bottom. And yet, even now, we still don't know what this new world is looking like. Um, in my mind, this new global economy today is defined by four Ds. And those four Ds are deglobalization, depopulation, debt, and de-democratization. Now, what do I mean by this? So take the first trend, deglobalization. What really is going on out here? From really the 1970s, we were used to a world where global trade was growing at a rate which was much faster than the global economy. In fact, global trade was expanding at a rate of two to three times the pace of the global economy. And that was bringing more and more countries together. It was bringing down walls, bringing down trade barriers and increasing the flow of capital between countries. But post 2008, that pace has slowed down significantly. Global trade has collapsed, in fact, in the last couple of years. For the first time outside of a global recession, global trade is currently contracting. This is huge. And the second big thing there is what's happened to global capital flows. Global capital flows have slowed down significantly in the post-global financial crisis world. And today we find that banks in particular are not lending much between borders and that was a big source of capital flows into India and other emerging economies uh, for much of the last decade before the global financial crisis. So that's the one big trend of deglobalization. The second trend, debt. There's far too much debt in the global economy. In fact, this is one of the staggering statistics for me, which is that many people thought that the global financial crisis of 2007 and 8 was brought about by too much debt in the Western world. That, and that's true. But if you look at what's happened in the global economy, after 2008, the, uh, and 2008, the total amount of debt in the global economy today as a share of the economy is even larger than where it was in 2008. How did this happen? Because many of the Western economies, such as the United States, have in fact been deleveraging, which is that they've been paying down some of the debts, particularly in the financial sector and in the household sector. So why is today debt in the global economy even higher than where it was in 2008. The main reason is China. China has taken on so much debt in the last few years to keep its economy ticking, to try and meet a very ambitious growth target, that China today has become the greatest source of instability in the global economy. Because China's debt level today is the highest of any emerging market in recent history. And for a country of that size to have such a large amount of debt can be very scary for the global economy. Therefore, today, China is the main country to watch to see whether the global economy goes into recession or not. But the fact is that debt and deleveraging have become two big trends to watch in the post-2008 financial crisis uh, environment. The third big trend I speak about, which is de uh, democratization. What do I mean by that? If you look at the global economy, till about 2006, 2007, the number of economies or number of countries that were adopting some sort of a democratic system was consistently increasing. But since then, we have seen many countries turn their back on democracy. Countries like Russia and Turkey, which were embracing democracy from very sort of uh, closed systems, these countries now are dialing back. They're going back to much more nationalist, single party kind of systems. Um, we are seeing the spread of democracy has stopped. The rise of nationalist leaders is taking place even in some Western economies, which we would have never expected a few years ago. But the bottom line is that the number of uh, countries in the world which are adopting democratic systems has stopped expanding post-2007. And the fourth big trend, possibly the main reason why the global economy today is growing at a rate which is much slower than it was before 2007, which is depopulation. As you possibly know, that there are two main sources of growth in, a, uh, in any economy. One is productivity and two is the increase in labor force or the number of people joining the labor force in a country. But in the global economy, what we've seen is that the population rates across the world have dropped significantly 
particularly in East Asia. For the first time in China's history, in 2015, China's population last year, the working age population, actually shrank. So you have a major headwind to global growth when the population growth rates have fallen across the world. The world's population used to be growing at about 2% or so for many years after the Second World War. But in the last couple of decades, that's dropped a lot and there's been a sharp fall in the working age population in the last decade. And that is leading to the global economy growing much slower today because fewer people are joining the workforce in a way they were for 30 to 40 years after the Second World War ended. So these four trends today are defining the global economy in my mind. You have much slower growth because of lower population growth, depopulation as I call it. Global trade is not expanding any further. Capital flows have slowed down. And we also have the prospect now of too much debt in some key economies such as China. And so therefore it's difficult for China to grow very rapidly also because its population growth rate has slowed down. So in my mind, it is these four Ds that you need to watch and focus on to figure out how the global economy is doing in the current context.